All right. So, take two. Here I am with Hannah. Hannah, is it Bagley? Is that how you pronounce it's the last Bagley. name? Bagley. Bagley. Like, <laughs> anyone Bagley. who... How is that spelled Bagley? There's an L in it. Yeah, but I fuck up real easy names all the time. <laughs> like, I've done that before so many times I on my channel. Name. It's just G-man. Yeah, it's a nice and easy one. Well, obviously, that's not my real name, but it's nice and easy anyway for a little nickname. But, like, whenever I see a name, I can make the easiest name look harsh. All right? Mm -hmm. So, you are currently... You're currently set... Like, you haven't officially made your pro debut yet, right? Not but yet. you've been kind of... You, do you know, the females I've interviewed in this channel, like I've interviewed Raven Chapman, who was part of Team GB, and I also interviewed Nicola Hopewell, who kind of done, kind of similar to what you did, she kind of fought Yeah, she, on... she's on a Bieber license, isn't, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She's on a different line, yeah. It's a different license altogether. It's still pro, but I don't think BoxRec like, kind of count it. But um, you... I, think, I think you can see them on BoxRec. I'm pretty sure, you, unless I'm mistaken, but I don't think... Um, they're recognised by the British Board of Boxing Control for like any titles or anything like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it doesn't give them any like, rankings with them. No. But what you're doing is you... How you came into boxing was you started doing just... Like, a lot of fighters are doing nowadays, the white-collar kind of unlicensed fights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did... started off as unlicensed. And then um, you pretty much, like, fight all your mates on there. And then once you're done there, it's like, Unless you decide to go amateur, there's only pro that's left. So um, amateur is definitely not not for me. I'm not that sort of fighter. I'm not technical, tippy tappy. Like I'm more of a get stuck in sort of um, fighter. <laughs> when you were doing the like unlicensed, it was like proper. Like it was was it three minutes or two minutes or how long was it? How's no, the there, difference there between two that? minutes. Um, but like no head guards. You you can request to wear them. And sometimes my opponents would, but yeah, it was like it was quite um, lawless to be honest. Like you made the rules of as you go along. Like each fight was different. Like sometimes you'd have a head guard, sometimes you wouldn't. Sometimes your opponent would decide last minute they're wearing one, but I didn't like them, so I never wore them after my first two. Um, and then they decided like sometimes it'd be 14 ounce plus depending on what show you were sometimes you could wear 10 as long as you wore their gloves yeah there was loads of different ones um loads of different ones where all what anything went really you would get there and my opponents a lot of the time would weigh in because i was on, on the road fighter as well they'd weigh in like three stone heavier than me and then the promoter would say oh like we can you can leave if you want and you won't get paid so like knowing that you're obviously <laughs> gonna stay aren't you <laughs> so like what how often was it that like you went to a fight where you just literally you probably didn't even know who you were fighting whether they'd have headgear yeah. whether like you um, they were like two stone heavier was that often or did yeah, you ever like, know in advance like i know i'm fighting this person this day it was all the time so you would know who you were fighting but the problem was is you would agree on a weight um, and then you, I would get there and I would always be on the weight and um, they would always, there was always weighing a lot heavier. I had a lot of people pulling out last minute because they, they'd sort of um, agreed to the fight months and months before and then by then, because I was fighting all the time in a short period of time, I'd had loads and loads more fights. So... A lot of people would then bottle it. That's what I'm <laughs> sick of on the unlicensed scene. Like no one wants to fight you unless they could definitely win. How long were you on the unlicensed scene for? Like because it, it went like a whirlwind. So um, I started years and years ago when I was 20. I, I did two fights, um, lost them both, and thought, oh my god, like this isn't for me. But to be fair, the girls I fought, like one was dead experienced, one had had like 58 fights. She's called Sophie. We're actually still really good friends, um, and we became sparring partners. And then um, she got told that I'd, I'd had loads, and she was my second ever fight. So it was a bit like it. They were they were so dangerous, really. And the, the first girl I fought, it was like really really close. And um, but yes, yeah, so they were the first two. Then I moved to Australia. And then I came right. back and me and my friend at the time decided we were going to start boxing together. And then we ended up, I ended up having more fights, but in total, I, end, I ended up having about 11 fights in eight months, seven months. 
I, I was I loved okay, it. Yeah. After that, I was mad for it. And then um, I was getting a bit of stick off like a few people on social media. Um, and they said like maybe, because uh, I was started getting like a few stoppages and I had a knockout on that one show. So um, they said like, although like, I wasn't very skillful as such compared to pros, was it time to step it up a level? Had I become like a bit of a bully? Which I personally didn't think so at all. I just think like, I was just, my name was just everywhere because I was fighting so often. So I think people were sort of getting a bit pissed off about it. Am I allowed to swear on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people were getting a bit pissed off. So um, yeah, I ended up going on uh, to wash, back to Australia. And then I messaged who is now my old coach um, I messaged him and said, would I have to go, ever go pro? Like, this is what I want to do. Like, I love it. I'm in Australia, but, like, my heart is with boxing now. And um, I don't really have, like, eight months, nine months experience. If you Like, I know I've been boxing for quite a while, but solidly, like. And um, he just said, I'll have a watch a few of your videos on, on Facebook or whatever. And then if I think that, you know, you've got any potential, then I'll, I'll let you know. But I can't tell you for sure until I see you. So I did it, and then he was like, yeah, he said, if you, if you come home, I'll, I'll definitely try and work with you. I feel like you've got raw potential. There's a lot to work on, obviously. So I booked my flight there and then, and left um, my partner at the time in Australia, and just went, and just was like, this is what I want to do. I want a box. So that was how this changeover happened. So this year you went from that just to straight into, like, I want to be a pro. How is the training going? Like, because, like, we see pictures of you, like, you'd be sparring. You're sparring Rihanna Dixon, who yeah, was, like, two and Yeah, um, a shambles. So I went down there, and um, me and my coach sort of fell out because um, I'd fractured my wrist, like, not long before. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd trained through it stupidly, and I was in a lot of pain. And... Um, We'd gone down there and it was just a bit of a shambles. Like after one round, he was, I was, he was saying I wasn't listening to him. And we were just like, we didn't get on. Like we, we clashed so much. This is why I'm looking for a new coach. Like I'm not bad mouthing him. Um, he's a great guy. We just don't gel um, at all. So that was a bit of a shambles. It was quite embarrassing to be fair. And that was like the cut off point for me where I was sort of right. Like um, I, need, I need somebody else to sort yeah. of um, guide me. So how's it been going with your new coach now? I how's haven't got one, right. So um, I trained with him for like 15 months. And um, in that time, like there's just been so many problems. And um, basically I just sort of had enough. So I was looking elsewhere for like a new sort of coach and management, but obviously I was in a contract with my old manager. And obviously, like, I sort of, I was still on good terms with my coach at the time. And, yeah, basically, I, I just decided enough's enough. So, did a bit of digging and thought, like, I, want, I just want a proper chance at this. Like, I've, I've not really had, I've, I've worked nothing in them 15 months. I'm wasting my time. We've been in lockdown. Our gym's been shut because he, he relocated the gym. And now it's being used for, like, a landscape workshop or whatever. So our gym's been shut for ages, and I, I really want to get back into it. So I've um, I've been on the prowl. I've messaged a few coaches and stuff. <laughs> um, and then I, I spoke with my manager and my coach, and um, we finally agreed that to, um, maybe it's best suited that they let me out of my contract. So they just let me out of my contract now, and um, I am going to sign with somebody. It's all... Um, sorted. Right. I'm going down to London, not this Sunday, but next. So keep your eyes out for that announcement, and then we can right. maybe chat again about that. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go and sign with my new management, and he's put me in contact with a few coaches around the northwest. I did message one um, one coach from down south, but we've had a bit of back and forth, and I've not had any more like bites off him, and like he's amazing. So um, I was holding out for that, but yeah, I'm on the prowl now. So you know, if any coaches see this and they fancy giving me a trial, um, then yeah. But I'm going down to a couple of gyms this weekend uh, in Manchester to see if like I gel with the trainer, he gels with me, 
and then obviously I'll go down to like one of the pro sessions as well, sort of see if I enjoy the gym vibe, get on with the people there. And then going down to Liverpool next Saturday um, to go and trial another gym down there. And they're all very well known trainers. They've really got a good stable. So yeah, I'm really excited. Did you kind of have any idea when the debut is going to be coming out? Like, would it probably yeah, be so this summer? I've with... been in contact with somebody. Somebody's contacted me. There's a show in September in Blackpool. So I could possibly be going on that. Um, and then after that, I'm hoping to get one by the, at least the back, back end of this year, at the very least, if not sooner. But obviously, I've been out of training for a while um, due to... I wouldn't say that anything of my fault. However, um, you know, without getting into too much fucking drama, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just feel like I, I've not been able to train. And yeah, I, I'm, I just want to make sure that I've got a good few months to sort of work work out with my new trainer, sort of get get a good little relationship going, build some trust between each other and um, hopefully teach me some new things and add to my arsenal, as well as sharpening up. So I'm not gonna rush it. I'm not gonna say like a, a start of summer fight. Um, I would say September would be ideal between September and December. So but just kind of get- a few things in the pipeline. Just kind of get used to like new surroundings, new trainer before yeah. like committing to anything. Cause like, you know, yeah, you see something where they rush into it and it's kind of- well. mm. They rush into something like that and they kind of be like, they might not bring the best ears, it might be too much too soon. Just... Exactly, exactly. You don't want to run before you can walk, for sure. And I know that I'm coming from a disadvantage already, coming from just unlicensed, with not <laughs> great of experience, but what I have got is um, I have got a lot of heart and I'm, I'm quite um, an aggressive sort of fighter. So, you know, hopefully we can change that into a nice slick boxer because I really like <laughs> that. What would your style kind of be? Would it just be all out pressure? Or are you trying to get like your know, bit of? It, usually, yeah. But then at the end of my fights, like in my last like couple of fights, um, you see a different sort of side to me. Where I started working with James Benny, who's a, an amazing person. Him and his family are absolutely amazing. He's one of the best coaches I've had. Him and Ryan Davis. Um, he used to be a professional boxer. He did really well. Two of the best coaches. And um, I worked alongside them both. Uh, and me and James used to work on really good shots. So, like, we'd practice a shot. And they'd be like, this is the shot we're going to look for when we go in the fight. We're going to implement, like, the roll. And then you're going you're gonna to do this shot. And we'd have, like, two or three shots. And they were all from, like, previous fights. So, like, when I was in Durham, I knocked a girl out um, when I was the away opponent. And so we, we called that shot Durham so that when we was in the ring, he shout Durham, and they wouldn't know, like, what was coming. So, like, I, I'm, I'm looking for that sort of, like, I want to go back to that where I was still aggressive, but I was also stepping back and not trying to be, like, fighting in the centre of the ring all the time. And I was sort mm -hmm. of fighting off the back foot a lot of the time and using my jab because I am I'm five foot eight and I did I used to fight at like sixty kilos. So um I was quite tall compared to my opponents a lot of the time. So, you know, sometimes fighting in, in the pocket was never that really beneficial to me because I'm I'm a lot bigger. So it was it was a lot more beneficial to just stay out of the way. So I'm definitely trying to change back into like not trying to fight in the centre of the ring with them. Okay. Question I have now, right, is a lot of we've seen look a lot of women's fights be shown on Sky and like they've got yeah. a lot more exposure. Someone who you know and someone who was doing a lot of women's boxing, Ebony Bridges. Yeah. Right, yeah. What are know. your Amazing. thoughts on the job she's been doing? Because she's if anyone doesn't know, she stayed in the UK post Shannon Court. She didn't go straight back to Australia. She's still here and, now. Yeah, she's been doing for someone who lost it was a close fight. She's, she's like done. She's won, isn't it? She's not lost, yeah. though, has she? In my eyes, she didn't lose anything. Like, if anything, she's all right. She technically lost the fight, but she's like won over the UK. She's like the people's champion, and she's like an, an amazing. I don't care what anyone says. She, like Shannon fucking Courtney, like Lisa Whiteside, all them lot who were trolling her on the internet at the time, and um, saying, "Oh, be respectful to the sport." Like, this is the problem that we're feeding out to people is that you can't show your body off, 
be pretty, you know, be a bonny girl and still fight and dominate a man's world. And that's not right. We should not be pushing out sexism more than we already have. We should be able to do all of that. And I think Ebony is an inspiration to the younger generation. Fuck what anyone else says, right? <laughs> I feel like she's an advocate for all the young girls growing up who are girly and maybe wouldn't try boxing because they'd be scared they don't fit in. You do what you want to do, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you look like. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. And nobody should be saying that we're being disrespectful for looking a certain way and maybe just approaching the promotion side a little bit different to what they think is acceptable. Because at the end of the day, there is no rules to it. So why they think that that's their God-given right, I don't know. And it you really think, winds me up. It does. You think I it's get so mad about it. Do you think it's, there's an element of jealousy to it there? Because One million percent. Yeah. For starters, right, Shannon Courtney used to be the golden girl, the one that's first come out who's a little bit girly, bright blonde hair, a bonny girl, and then Ebony Bridges comes along and she's like, you know, the exact same, maybe... Maybe just a bit more like girly and she's got the fake boobs and she's, you know, flaunting her body because obviously she works hard for it. And I think the element of jealousy is there from Shannon and she's promoted that live on the internet and stuff. And then it's it's allowed other women to then try and drag her down. And I just think like, why would women want to do that to each other? Like lift each other up? I think... It's, it's, a, it's an interesting one because Ebony Bridges, right, when she got into boxing, it was down to her being a ring car girl. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. It is. And you have people saying that they should be banned. And if it, and Ebony, I think, would say herself, if it wasn't for that, she probably would never have got into boxing. I know. And again, like, look at the people who think it should be banned. It's fucking Doris from down the street. Like, the old women who've got nothing better to do than fucking gossip about other people. Or the younger girls who are just jealous. They're just, like, jealous through and through. Um, you know, and so I think some people are partly jealous because um, maybe looks do help you get a bit further. And they're, you know, they, they think that boxing owes them a favour because they've maybe done a good amateur career or they've been in the pros a long time and they deserve that. But, like, have they done what it takes to get noticed, to put the bums on seats, to create the, the you know, the the demand that other people have. And that's what you have to look at because although, yeah, you should be able to box and just do it off brilliant boxing, but at the end of the day, boxing is a business and I don't think people quite understand that or if they do, they're just feeling sorry for themselves because, like, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it now. Like, I hope so many other girls that don't fit the stereotype decide, right, I'm going to be a boxer now. And it is getting more and more common. I have seen more and more gorgeous, like, female sports women, you know, not even in just boxing. So, yeah, um, I think the green-eyed monster is so, so apparent in people. Mm -hmm. I think, like, as you said there, what Ebony's done since losing that fight, I mean, she's been on, what, Soccer AM, Soccer Saturday, she's been on a couple of shows as well. Like, and it's not, crazy. And not only that, she's given up her time, which she didn't have to do, and go around meeting her fans, like you know, inspiring the, the younger generation, the children's in the gyms, you know, all the, all the stuff that I've not seen Jean Courtney doing and she's champion, do you know what I mean? She's the one that wants to be the role model. Well, where are you now? So, you know, you've it's, got to practice what you preach, unfortunately, and a lot of these people don't. I think a lot of people want to have their cake and eat. That's the problem, I think, with, like, not just in boxing, just in general, like, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just one of the problems we have today. In terms of, like, fights, like, would you religiously follow, like, male-female fighting? Or would it be just kind of, are you just kind of a fan, just a, a kind of so, on and off fan? I was like, I did, I'm not going to lie, like, I started off as, like, a, not a glory fan, but, like, just, I enjoyed the fights that people were hyped up about. And that's, you know, and this is another thing, like, I've noticed people through people hyping fights up. So, like, where it, the turning point for me truthfully was um Tyson Fury versus Vladimir Klitschko um the first one so that was sort of my um take and obviously the second one never happened and stuff and then um with the whole Anthony Joshua versus Klitschko that was where I really got hooked in 
um, for me personally watching it. And I've always loved Katie Taylor, but you know, as a kid, you've got a social life. It, it never really appealed to me. And then when I started fighting myself, that's when I was like, wow, like I really love this. And I've become like a bit of a boxing fan now. And I am quite like into it. I do like looking at all the up and coming people who aren't well known because eventually that can sort of be who you're fighting. Um, yeah, I, I would say like men and women. I'm not just a diehard women's fan because obviously it's not even been a thing really till the last like three or four years. So, um, but yeah, I do. I am a fan now. I just need On to top of that. my boxing IQ. <laughs> well, then who do you have the weekend? Billy Joe versus Canelo. I'm not going to lie, right? Um, I do, obviously, you want your English to, you know, um, win. I think Canelo will win. Um, however, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if Billy did win. It's just sometimes I think he, he lets himself down. Like that thing with the reporter today. Um, did you see that? Yeah, I did. I just thought Billy yeah, made, like, why did you do that? Like, that guy's like, he just looked like such a pleasant chap. You know, doing his interview all there, stood in his suit, you know, really pleased to be there. And that, and it just ruined it. It made me feel sad, like, why treat people like that? So it did, it did piss me off that. I thought, you know what? No wonder people want to see you get knocked out. Like, <laughs> if that's the way you're treating people. No, I think that uh, it, it's going to be a good fight. I just think that mm -hmm. Canelo is just, just 10, just, he's the best fighter in the world for a reason. And I just yeah. can't see it going out either way. Who are the fighters that you, like, male or female, but who are the fighters that really inspire you? There's a, there's a couple. Um, I feel like, I hate saying it. I, I hate feeling like I, I feel cliche for saying it because people obviously sometimes say, like, oh, people only support, like, the, the people in the public eye. But for me, um, personally, Tyson Fury, um, I think he's amazing. And I think it's not only what he brings in, in in the ring. It's definitely the build-up to me, like the, the outside of the ring. And also um, coming back from that dark place, that depression, and I know everyone talking about it, and it's like one of the biggest things in his career now. But I really do like sympathise with him and understand where he's coming from. When you're in a dark place, to pull yourself back out of that is hard. And then to be famous and in the public eye with it, I can't imagine what he was going through. Not to mention, like, having a family that depend on you, sort of, to be there. Like, for me, that's quite inspiring because it's not just about the boxing. It's it's about the life lessons that come with it. And I'm dead sappy about things like that, like. So, yeah, <laughs> um, Terry Harper, I think he's done amazing. Like, obviously, Katie Taylor, but Terry Harper, like, I really do think that she's a phenomenal, phenomenal young girl. Um, she's... Like the way she trains, you know, it's like she's 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 not champion. She's fighting. She's hungry. Do you know, I, I really love her work ethic, and I also think um, Steffi alongside that, mm -hmm. they, they're just such a great team. I think for inspiring young girls, she's a really good role model. Um, and obviously, she's got an LGTB little charity thing that's starting. So obviously, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, and yeah, Katie Taylor, Katie Taylor for me, wow, wow. She fights like she probably batter most men. <laughs> Her and Canelo, <laughs> like, but no, she um, she's phenomenal. She really is. You just watch her on a hand speed and a work like her again. Her work ethic. When I watched her documentary, have you seen it, Katie? No, not yet. Oh, you've not watched it. No, well, not yet. Right, this is what you need to do. You need to go away and watch the film, Katie. Wow, I was crying. Like, I was watching it, and, and like my friend was like, why are you crying? Like, there's nothing to cry about. But I was just so emotional. Like, when you watch it, you'll understand what I mean. But yeah, um, they're inspirational for me. Definitely. So it's kind of a good list there. Like, it's kind of got Fury, Terry, and Katie Taylor. Like, it's... yeah. Definitely. It's really, really good on that now. Now, you've already kind of got through most of the questions I had pretty much ready for I you. Just it's... At you. Okay. Yeah, you thought at me. Like, I mean, this has been the easiest interview I ever had to do. I've only had to say like two words and be like, I can chill for five minutes now and then get it to get the rest in. 
But um, no, Zara, keep going for 25 minutes and my battery's running out as well. But before I go, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to, sponsors, trainers or anything? <laughs> yeah, I've been trying this for long enough anyway. But is there anyone you want to give a shout out to before we go, like sponsors or anything like that? Um, yeah, so I prep for you, my meal sponsors. They have been absolutely amazing to me. Um, from the start of the first lockdown, uh, they sponsored me when in a time of, you know, uncertainty and they had their own bills and stuff to pay. They've just been absolutely amazing. So I can't wait for people to see me maybe on a big screen and, you know, their names be on my shorts. So yeah, meal sp sponsors, I prep for you have been amazing big up to those lads yes big up, to <laughs> big up to shout out big up to all those guys but in terms of everything else just thanks for coming on and you know we keep an eye out you said september hopefully is when you get yeah. the announcement your pro debut announcement next sunday next sunday yeah. don't forget keep your eyes peeled oh, definitely i'll be keeping my eyes out to see who that is yeah um, no hints at all Put it? No, no hints. Oh, I can't, I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's no worries. We'll Let's find out on Sunday. Not any hint. There's, there's a hint. So don't say any more now. Don't say any names. All right. So it's not Eddie Hearn. All right. That's real. That's one, one T. That's one out of the way. <laughs> that's one gone. In terms of that, I'm going to leave that there before everything dies and you're kind of left on your own. So thanks for coming on. Thanks to everyone in the chat. Um, obviously, we've seen a good few comments in the chat and all that. We've got a few people in. So hopefully, you got some new fans out of this. Well, yeah, yeah, for me, you... it's like I'm, I'm just happy to um, sort of start these things. I've got another one to do next week after the Canelo fight. We're going to be talking about that. So, but I won't forget you. So hopefully, when I'm famous, <laughs> <There you go. laughs> we can do there another one of these. <laughs> World champ, who was your first interviewer? Yeah, your boy. There you go. But... For now, I'm going to end this. Lads and lassies, hope you enjoyed the interview. Big up to Hannah for coming on. Lads Thanks, and lassies, guys. I'll talk to you.